I'm Lauren Malhoit, and I'm here with the ACI 101 video series. Today we'll be talking about ACI policy, specifically application profiles. In ACI, we have what are called application profiles. If you're familiar with UCS service profiles, it's not entirely different from those. It allows us to easily assign policy to endpoints and basically puts the application centric in ACI. So application profiles consist of three things, endpoint groups, contracts, and layer four through seven services. So let's dive into each one of these and see what they are to get a clearer picture of how they can help ease network administration in the long run. Let's start with endpoint groups or EPGs. Now the definition of an endpoint group is that it's literally a group of endpoints. So got it? Right. No, but seriously, that's all it is. Anything you might attach to the leaf switches in ACI would be considered an endpoint. It could be bare metal servers with hypervisors on them or without hypervisors. Uh, they could be layer four through seven services like firewalls. It could be a storage array even, uh, Docker, containers, any sort of microservices really. And it could be another switch even, say, to uh, allow you to get to the internet or to your existing network. Not only can an endpoint group contain different types of endpoints, but the endpoints can have IP addresses in different subnets. Of course, if you want to keep it similar to your current network, especially during the transition to ACI, for example, you could have it only contain endpoints in one subnet. But once we start working towards that app-centric model, the IP addresses matter less than the actual policy. So now we have endpoint groups with a bunch of hosts or endpoints inside them. Let's call them EPG, web, and app. Now we know we're always using the web app database model to describe applications, and we know that doesn't actually exist in the real world. But, but it gets across the example of EPGs generally represent either tiers of applications, uh, they could represent layer four through seven services, or they might even represent common services like DHCP and DNS. So anyway, back to our example EPGs. Endpoints within an EPG can communicate by default unless we turn on isolation, and we'll talk about that in another video. Now, ECI uses a whitelist model though, so essentially there's a stateless firewall enabled over the entire fabric, meaning by default an endpoint in one EPG cannot communicate with an endpoint in another EPG. Now the way we turn this line from red to green, or rather enable traffic between endpoints, is by using a contract. Now, contracts are also made of three things subjects, filters, and labels. The names of these constructs aren't actually as important as understanding ultimately what a contract does. It's very similar to an ACL or firewall rule, except that you're generally allowing traffic instead of denying it. Remember that whitelist model that we just talked about. The label in this case is the first thing checked and it's an optional feature. You don't have to have a label. But basically, the label is simply a name or a tag applied to an object such as an EPG. And if the names don't match up between two of these EPGs or objects, traffic will be denied. Filters specify allow or deny, though in most cases, as I said, it will be allow because of that whitelist model. The subject is simply the kind of traffic that will be allowed. While this does look a lot like an ACL, it's really much easier to implement as well as keep track of. Now that's one of the main problems with ACLs and firewall rules is that we lose track of them and everyone's too scared to delete them in case it's actually doing something. So the maintenance there is hard. So it's a bear to manage and impossible to actually locate dependencies. Now contracts will help with this and can be easily made bidirectional as well with the click of a button, though they can be unidirectional if you like. I'm only going to cover layer four through seven services from a high level in this video to get the point across of what they're actually there to do and how they integrate into an application profile. There are several different kinds of layer four through seven appliances out there. Of course, not all of them having to do with security, but firewalls, intrusion prevention and detection systems are fairly commonly used. Other appliances like load balancers would also be included in this group. In the case of stitching these services in the network, they're actually created as service graphs within a contract. For example, if we want to add a firewall in between two EPGs because we need deep packet inspection, for example, 
we'll add that in as a service graph in the contract between those EPGs. Now, this could be a Cisco ACA, but it could also be a Juniper or Fortinet firewall. There are over 50 different ecosystem partners that ACI works with. So likely, if you're using a more popular firewall, we're going to work with them. Also, the appliance could be physical or virtual. It doesn't matter in the case of ACI. There are two ways we can manage this service graph now as well, either in a managed or unmanaged mode. Managed mode means that the layer 4 through 7 service, in this case a firewall, will actually be managed by the APIC. So the parameters will be configured within the APIC GUI, let's say. In unmanaged mode, we're actually doing that management still from the layer 4 through 7 device itself. So neither way is really wrong, just depending on how your IT teams are set up and what kind of level of automation that you're looking to ultimately achieve. If we look back at our full application profile, we can see what the traffic flow will be. Our clients or end users will actually be in an EPG of their own with a contract set up between them and the web servers or the web EPG. If the traffic is appropriate, it will go onto a firewall for deep packet inspection and then onto a load balancer to send the traffic to multiple web servers in their own EPG again. Traffic will then be sent through a contract uh, and load balancer to the app servers and finally through a contract and a firewall to the database servers in the DB EPG. Then it can go back because of the bidirectionality of contracts. So not only are we able to make these application-centric profiles, we can reuse any part of them we want. We can literally copy and paste our prod application profile, paste it to a test application profile. So they're exactly the same when we go to test a new version of an application, for example. We can also reuse things like firewall service graphs or contracts. We can copy these to different tenants as well. For example, if you were setting up common services for the sales tenant and the marketing tenant. Thanks so much for watching.